Welcome to the NFL Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast, and we roll along in the NFL here. Week 9 is already upon us. We have some play props in here for you as we're bringing you each and every week. So make sure to subscribe to that page and continue to follow along with all the great NFL content we have on thelines.com right now. Also, I uh, want to let you know about a deal with BetMGM that we are offering you guys, an exclusive new deal for new customers. If you don't yet have a BetMGM account, you can get one now and get up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your first bet does not hit, uh, plus a $50 bonus bet guaranteed no matter what. So use the promo code, the lines YT50, and when you sign up with the special link, in the description of the video uh, and the pinned comment. If you want to find it there, you'll be able to go ahead and get this deal right away. So definitely a really nice little $1,500. You don't always see that $1,500 in in bonus bets there. So I would take advantage. But Nate, you stay hot in the NFL. The kid is up more than 10 and a half units on the season. Let's keep it going, baby. What's your first play here for uh, this weekend? Yeah, and I will say the MGM lines have have been the best kind of prices when we use that that player props tool to to find these odds, but uh, yeah, let me di- dive into the pick. It- it's time to go back to Mr. David Montgomery, who was That's very cool. good to us last year, especially when he played the Packers. Uh, I think we had him in the show both times and he just smashed them, but props pretty low right now. 56 and a half rushing yards is where we'll go. Anytime touchdown is also pretty low after he failed to score for, I think the first time all year. Uh, last week and that's minus 120 I have no problem I, I personally hit a, a 60 plus rush and part and touchdown parlay got a nice plus 170 there um, you can play around with it more than that and, and and get more juice for sure but look the situation first outdoor game for the Lions all year and definite rain in the forecast along with 12 mile per hour winds so what do you think is going to happen they're going to lean on that top three offensive line Against the Packers defense, that's pretty soft between the tackles. It has been for years. Struggled to stop power backs. Coming off 18-78 to Tank Bigsby. 25-115 to Joe Mixon. And the Texans only had 197 yards total. So they just pounded it with Mixon. So I expect to see more Monty than Gibbs a little bit. I mean, he's he's been kind of fading in terms of snap counts, in terms of touches most of the year and people might be thinking like, Oh, oh, older back, like they're phasing him out, putting Gibbs in. But I I think in this spot in sort of a playoff environment and a huge game, they are going to lean with their bigger back who averaged uh, almost two more attempts per game on the road last year, had 66 plus rushing yards in three of their four outdoor games. um, The exception being against Tampa Bay, which was a a fantastic run defense at that time, but more so uh, he's just a victim of circumstance lately that the reason he's been playing fewer snaps and getting like 10 to 12 carries, they obviously just crushed two of their last three opponents, Tennessee and Dallas. Minnesota is a pass funnel, which you will get into here. Uh, so you're not going to try to pound a big back there. And I, I mean, pretty much every, every game you go down the line, it, it's a situation where the, the Lions haven't been forced to, to kind of lean on their run game, which is the strength here. Everyone's aware of outdoor golf and how he might struggle including the Lions staff. So I think that we see a healthy dose of Montgomery here as the Lions try to stay, stay conservative given the weather. Yeah, I think that all makes sense. Um, man, minus 120, it's crazy that that's like a, a nice price for a touchdown. But yeah, a man who scores every time and, and Jameer Gibbs and him have actually scored a mul- in the same game. Um, the majority of the time that they've played together. So uh, I like him for the tutty for sure. I think the rush yards, it's yet, like you said, the, the game plan should be pretty simple. Uh, maybe some short crossing routes for Amon Ra and, and even Khalif Raymond these days with Jamison Williams out. But yeah, that's another thing. Jamison Williams is out. Um, you can just continue to rely on that run game even more for, for Detroit. So uh, I like Monty coming back here with him. Also love Josh Downs. You, you foreshadowed that I was going to mention uh, team playing against the Minnesota Vikings pass funnel defense. That's where Josh Downs comes into play. And he has uh, a better passing quarterback in, but more consistent than Anthony Richardson right now for this Colts team with uh, Joe Flacco expected to be in this one. Uh, He's played two and a half games now with Joe Flacco this season. (laughs) 30, he's got 24 of the 30 targets that he's gotten. They are on the same page. And a lot of those were deep balls. 72.3 yards per game with Flacco in there. Um, And yeah, even with uh, Ant in there, you know, he's been the preferred receiver for Richardson. Like Michael Pittman, 
I mean, he was available in my fantasy league earlier. So that tells you about the state of where he's at uh, in connection with both these quarterbacks. Um, he's still, you know, last week with um, with and in there, four for nine on the nine targets, 109 yards. So still love the nine targets he got, regardless of which quarterback is in there. There's there's calls being made for him, obviously. And he's a blitz beater, which you need to be against such a high pressure defense that has gotten to the quarterback and is blitzing, as we know, at the highest rate. Um, and that's going to that's where you're running back, uh, you're short down uh, receivers and you're, you're running back coming to play here for some of that, that those uh, short crossing routes, like I was mentioning. And I think that's where he's going to get a lot of his, his damage. And then he'll, he'll blow it up the top as well against that dominant uh, Minnesota run defense uh, and Minnesota for good reason. They've been leading for most of the season. They're one of the best first half teams. They've jumped out to leads in most of their games and all of their wins um, and have and have had the luxury then of being able to blitz the, the quarterback and expect the, 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 uh, the pass. But that's why they've gotten the pass against them so much everybody needs to pass against them like third uh, most pass attempts against minnesota this season um 263 yards per game as a result that they've allowed through the air um and flacco's looking at 41 attempts per game in his two starts basically abandoned the run and they played some pretty high scoring affairs um and that's a big big difference between ant richardson obviously you you, you uh, schedule up a little bit more runs for him and get a little bit more trickery in there as opposed to a pocket passer like uh, joe flacco and and ants had like 16 fewer pass attempts per game than flacco's 41 and those those two so uh yeah i love the idea of this being a heavy pass script game for this colts team and josh downs being the beneficiary of it yeah, and I wonder how much Brian Flores is like licking his chops to like, okay, you, know, you, you benched the young athletic guy for a 40 year old statue. Like, we're coming after you for sure. Uh, so I, I think, yeah, the, the call about Don's, Downs being a, a blitz beater is yeah. key here. Uh, if you just want to take the receptions, that makes sense. But I, I mean, he could be looking at eight to 10 receptions is basically where he was at with Flacco. And, and it's not hard to get 60 yards if, if you're getting those short catches. So, yeah, definitely like it. Um, Jake Ferguson over 48 and a half receiving yards with Dallas at Atlanta. And no, I'm not taking CD lamb. I am taking Jake the snake because um, like I, AJ Terrell is a dude and he's going to be shadowing CD for a lot of the game. Um, Atlanta and everybody else who's played the Cowboys has been like, why don't you make somebody else beat us? Like we know you invested everything in these two guys, uh, Dak and, and CD, and we're just going to try to shut down that combination. And I mean, it's left Jalen Tolbert, who is bad, who is the, the least efficient wide receiver in the league with, with this amount of snaps. Kevontae Turpin, who's a special teamer. Uh, Brandon Cooks is out. So, I mean, it's, it's basically Dak has been like, I, I like throwing to Jake. And I mean, 12 targets the last two games, nine catches for just 3.7 yards per reception. And I think a lot of that is matchup. I mean, you face Fred Warner and the Niners, who are just all over tight ends, never never giving anything up. Detroit, also pretty good against tight ends, coached by a former tight end. Um, and that was just like a humiliating defeat where they barely even had the ball. Uh, his previous three, Jake, 6.3 catches for 71 yards per game, 11.3 yards per reception. So it's not like the A dot's not there. He's going to be getting it going down the field a little bit. And the key thing here, bearing the lead, is that the Falcons' pass rush is pathetic. Like that—that that is the reason I would not. I, I'm, I'm leaning towards Cowboys here with the points, is because Dak will finally have a clean pocket. I think, and they—you look at their schedule; they haven't faced one bad pass rush yet. Like Giants, Steelers, Niners, uh, you know, even the even the Browns in Week One. Like that's a pretty solid pass rush. And this Atlanta, they're not going to be getting to Dak at all. So even though they are one dimensional. Uh, they're not going to need to keep Jake in there to block. He's he'll be able to leak out, get get open. Atlanta has been vulnerable to the tight end for this exact reason, giving up at least forty four and four straight, including eighty one to Kate Odden last week, including sixty four to someone named uh, J- Jatavion Sanders. That the Panthers like third string tight end was out there. Sorry if I if I mis mispronounced your name there, but um, yeah, I, I mean Jake Ferguson is a legit receiving target and, and in a in a very pass heavy offense. Yeah, D- Dak Prescott, tight end. Uh, it's always it's going to be a, a good find for sure, and definitely the the moment in time. I think we're waiting. If we're waiting for the, the Cowboys to turn it around this season, the way they did last season on offense, this is a a pretty good get right spot for that. For especially for the pass game this week, so I I think Dak is actually in for a pretty big game once again against this this Falcons pass defense, and he'll be able to find the tight end as much as anybody with the way that they play such with their high safeties as we know, but. Um, let me fade Minshew, Gardner Minshew, under 231 and a half. That's passing and rushing yards because we're down to what, like 220 and a half or so as we record this on Friday for the passing yards alone. 
bet down a little bit from like 224, but the rushing yards at like 11 and a half yards is preposterous. Um, as we know, he's, he's only gone over that once this season. And, you know, you, you kind of called it out. This is a pretty disrespectful to the Bengals defense that was not projected to be as uh, play as poorly as it has, but it wasn't projected to lose the majority of its key defensive linemen either. Right. And even Taylor Hendricks missed uh, some, some games earlier this season, Hendrickson, and you've got Sheldon Rankins that was missing for a while. That was a huge reason for that, for that past defense being so porous. They got him and Hill back on the D line now. Um, and if this game is sort of playing, it plays out the way that it seems like it is with rain, you got a 46 and a half total that I, I think we both lean to the under in this one with this Raiders Bengals game. That seems like it's just going to be sloppy and nasty. Um, you've got T. Higgins out probably not going to be quite as explosive for Burrow in the rain plus without um you know hit his man there and and they've been so bad against the rush by the way the the uh the Raider the Raiders have I, I can see that the, the the Bengals just controlling the clock in that way as well with with both their backs available in this one you talk about uh Minshew's attempts well some of those are going to be taken away most likely from turnovers uh, we've seen him be a complete turnover machine, 35 fumbles and 56 career games, not a very good ratio. Um, and this season alone, three lost fumbles, also eight picks. So this is a big potential for some turnovers, maybe some uh, defensive touchdowns, that kind of stuff. That's probably where we'd be recommending to be looking for this. Um, and if you look at his last road start, definitely much worse there. 44.1 completion percentage when he was playing at the Rams. Awful, awful defense. Although they've been better against the pass, I will say, but still very bad, bad defense. Um, 154 yards in that game against the Rams on four and a half yards per attempt. So really not even able to look downfield now without Devontae Adams. Obviously more possession receivers in tow for him, including the, the probably the best deep threat at this point is his big tight end, uh, Brock Bowers, potentially. Um, and that got him benched, by the way, which is something that we could see I never thought I'd say this, but Desmond Ritter's in town and breathing down his neck. And so as bad as Minshew's been, I mean, Antonio Pierce kind of seems like he's floundering at times, man, right? Like the, the attempts to just bring in new quarterback and see if there's a new Band-Aid for the problem um, that is has a lot bigger problem than that. He's just trying to cover up the symptoms. And that's kind of what I consider Minshew right now. So I, I think this pass offense will continue to struggle a ton uh, against a defense that's probably being underrated as it gets healthier. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not a far field to say Minshew could get benched for one turnover. Definitely two turnovers would be an auto bench, I think, at this point. It doesn't matter, like, Antonio Bierce in his mind is like, I don't care who the backup is. Like, we need to set a tone that you need to protect the football. And Minshew has been had a real problem doing that lately. Now we, you throw in the rain, the potential for some fumbles there. A Bengals team that is desperate at home. Yeah, I like the the Bengals like Chase Brown stack in DFS like, as as a pretty cheap option based on what you're talking about there and just keeping this like sloppy um and and, and unlikely that you're going to get shredded by Minshew. Like yeah, the Bengals they, they've had some tough matchups lately uh to get shredded by those deep, those offenses, but I, I this is not one. Like who are the Raiders really deploying on the outside like like you said that, uh, to, to be an option for Minshew. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Chicago at Arizona should be an offensive friendly environment. I will go 86 and a half scrimmage yards for DeAndre Swift, who is taken over as the clear focal point in, in this rushing attack and really in the offense as they sometimes try to limit, uh, what Caleb Williams has to do if they can get it going on the ground. And we just saw for the Dolphins, A-Chan as the focal point, 97 yards against this Cardinals defense on just 10 carries and 60 receiving yards. Swift has 119 or more scrimmage yards in four straight now. And if you just take the rushing 96 and a half at 5.4 yards per carry, you say, oh, well, that's skewed by a 56 yarder where he ran back and forth all over the field against Washington. Well, he still had 73 rushing yards before that. And Washington held him without a catch. Washington is actually number one limiting uh, running backs receptions. So go figure there. I mean, they've done a great job. Cardinals have not. I mean, 42 receptions is below average for sure to running backs and Swift is, is very involved. His previous three, 44% of the routes he's run caught all 13 targets from Caleb Williams, who can extend plays, get it to his back in space. That's, that's really the key here is get Swift in space. He's averaging 10 yards per reception on the season. He's averaging five yards per touch. And you just do the math. He's gotten between 18 and 23 touches in four straight. That is going to equal at least 90 scrimmage yards if he maintains that average. And we're talking about a, a, an Arizona defense that's well below average. Yeah, I, I love Caleb Williams and Jane Daniels so much. It's incredible what having a good quarterback does to the team. It's just kind of like, why would we try if we don't think we can win and we can't win if we don't have a good quarterback? And now they have a good quarterback. Uh, I'll go ahead and say that at this point in the season for Caleb Williams. Rough start. 
got some easy matchups under his, under his belt, got some good uh, confidence, and now he's back out there uh, doing his thing, which only helps DeAndre Swift, who I don't think it's a coincidence, really picked it up after the internet was like, why is this guy in the NFL? Because there was just clips of him not having any kind of vision while running. Since that week, since week three, man, dude has been off and running and poor Roshan Johnson has been the victim of it without getting back into that rush share quite as much. In fact, Roshan's been used more of as a goal line back, which is interesting instead of even like a scat or anything. But um, I'm going to go over to the Panthers game, Nate, and close it out with some some hold your nose and and place bet kind of plays here because Bryce Young is only at 184 and a half yards. And I think that's going to be good enough for him in this matchup. I also think Chuba Hubbard, I mean, you've got to attack running backs against the Saints. The the, the thing that may, let's, makes us kind of go, eh, maybe Bryce Young over him in this situation is just obviously Jonathan Brooks could come in and eat into that um, at this point now that he's finally available, the young, talented Rook. Uh, I still think that both guys could get over their pro- – Chuba's at 53 and a half rush yards, and I'm good with both of those against this awful Saints defense, which has been the worst rush defense, by the way. I'll just start there. Since week four, uh, they're the second worst rush defense in the league for the whole season, so I'm, I'm not going out on a limb to say they've been even worse um, in week four, but it, it also highlights the injuries that they've had on the defensive side of the ball, both in the secondary and on the line um, and even in the linebacking core. But if we if we look at um, Bryce Young here and you want to just make this a massive balls bet of the week here, not even just big balls, because uh, this is one that, you, like I said, hold your nose, but he started 10 for 12 last week. And if you were watching any of those passes, it was like, wow, he's going a little bit further than six yards down the field. He's passing to the sidelines. There was some, some eye test stuff with Bryce Young that made you go, this doesn't this doesn't look like the same guy. And he's shown those glimpses in like now three career games or so, including last week. But uh, maybe this is the start of, of a little bit of a run. He finished with 224. Um, and I do think they're going to continue to be in a situation where, I mean, the Saints, as bad as their offense is, Panthers defense might even be worse than the the, the Saints offense with, with Rattler in there. Um, and either way, like I think that the controlling the clock thing is still going to have to be done a little bit through the air, like we say. So um, they're going to probably continue to let it fly. Like this is all about auditions at this point. Like Bryce Young is playing for a starting job in the NFL at this point if he wants to keep it. And they're going to test him out with it uh, and continue to have a pretty balanced pass rush attack, I think. You know, they, at times they've actually run more, obviously, um, with Bryce out there. But at this point, too, like, the, like you said, you were saying earlier, they have to let it go for him. Um, and the Saints D in terms of pass defense, also just as bad in the last four weeks, especially uh, 453 yards per game that they're allowing total. And it's just going to continue to be probably, a, you know, a, a, a sieve of, of offense that they allow through them uh, with their, their injuries that they're still feeling. Yeah, the injuries is the thing here. The Saints actually march on Lattimore and Kool-Aid McKinstry, who's thrust into the starting role. Uh, with Paulson and Debo done for the year. They're yeah. both not practicing. Uh, the Saints have one healthy quarterback and a two guys off the practice squad that might be out there. So, like, if there's ever a time for Bryce Young to show something, which he, I mean, he showed us something against maybe the best secondary in the league last week. Like, they were like, wow, the Panthers are in this a little bit. Like, you, you know, he spent three weeks. We, we we joked about Zach Wilson getting the reset, right? And and learning from a veteran maybe, but he he probably is going to really benefit from this, from watching Andy Dalton operate for three weeks, right? Everything he does in prep time. And now he's like working, Andy Dalton's literally like his mentor over his shoulder. Like, what are you seeing? What are you going to do? Uh, I don't think it takes that big balls to go 185 when he went 224 against Denver. Uh, and the Saints defense is putrid actually Derek Carr will be back you, you mentioned Spencer exactly. Rattler yeah. it's, it's almost certain he's back so okay. more more points to be going back and forth here what takes balls is to take the Panthers plus seven and a half because you have to lean on that defense making a stop or two against now an NFL quarterback but no I think either way Bryce Young should be around 200 yards like uh, I I mean yeah the kid the kid's got to show something one way or another and I think he's he's making the most of a of a second start yeah, I mean, look, we're not going to give you like past stats of his where he's been successful to to help you out. We've only got a couple examples of that. It's just whether or not you believe in this spot. And I, this spot is incredible against uh, one of the worst defenses in the league, if not top, bottom three. We'll call it that. But that's all the time we have for you in week nine in the NFL. Coming back to you each and every week, though. So make sure to subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along until we see you next. Happy betting. Happy betting.